welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on the WW or the Weight Watchers Blue Plan. Today I am here to share with you my top 10 tips to be successful on WW. These 10 things I have done to lose almost 60 pounds. So if you're excited for today's video, give it a big huge thumbs up. And don't forget if you're new or you haven't subscribed, hit that little subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell next to it so you never miss a single video. Down in the description box, you're going to find my nutrition coaching website. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. Whether you're on WW or not, you need to know how many calories you should be eating every day to lose weight, but to sustainably do that and keep it off long term. I also offer 30 and 60 minute coaching sessions if you want to talk a little bit more individually on your goals. So check that out down in the description box. You're also going to find links and discount codes to all of my favorite things as well as my Facebook group. So definitely head on over and join us over on Facebook. We'd love to have you. I'm excited to share my top 10 tips to be successful on the WW program. I get asked all the time what my tips are to be successful. What have I done to lose almost 60 pounds? So today I'm going to share with you my top 10 tips, things that I've done and will continue to do along the rest of my weight loss journey on the WW program. Tip number one is to use the WW app. Download that app to your phone, your laptop, your tablet. Make sure that you're consistently using the app. It's a great place to track your food, to be most successful on your weight loss journey. It's important to track your food. You can see how many points you've eaten for the day, as well as how many points you have left for the day, all in the app. There's tons of recipes built into the app, as well as a place to log your weight. Now, remember your points on WW will change as you gain or lose weight. So you want to make sure that you're consistently tracking your weight in the app. If you attend a WW in-person workshop, the guide will go ahead and enter your weight into the system and it will reflect in your app. If you are an online only member or you're just using that app, you'll need to go in and manually enter your way in every week or every two weeks or however often you weigh in on the scale. But utilize the app. It's a big feature on the WW program. So make sure that you're using it every single day to track your food, look up recipes, and make sure that your weight is accurate in the app as well. Tip number two is something I swear by, and that is to plan and prep your meals. Fail to plan, plan to fail, one of my favorite sayings of all time. This doesn't mean that you have to spend hours and hours in the kitchen every single week prepping all of your meals. What this does mean though is to think about what meals you're going to have during the week and plan for that. Write down your breakfast, your lunches, your dinners, snacks, things that are on your plan to have for the week. That way when you're putting together your grocery list, you can stay on budget, stay on track at the grocery store, not add random things to your cart, and you'll also at least have an idea or a plan in place for your meals for the week. When we don't have a plan or when we haven't prepped or gotten ourselves ready for a successful week, we find ourselves in the drive-through. We find ourselves picking things out of our pantry or fridge or freezer that aren't the healthiest options because they're quick, they're easy, and they're convenient. So one way to really stay on track and to consistently lose weight is to set yourself up for success. Maybe chopping up all your fresh vegetables and your fruits for the week and having those front and center in your refrigerator would help you choose those over the chips in your pantry or the unhealthy snacks in your refrigerator. Just make sure you're setting yourself up for success. This is so incredibly important to do. Plan and prep your food for the week. Tip number three is to pre-plan your day. Even go as far as to pre-track your day. Dinner is generally the heaviest meal or the highest in points, at least for me during the day. So if I know what I'm having for dinner, and remember I've planned this out when I did my grocery list, I may have even prepped some of the ingredients, taken the meat out of the freezer, pre-chopped up the vegetables. When I know what I'm having for dinner, I can pre-track that in my app. That will take away the points for dinner and let me know what I have left for my other meals and snacks throughout the day. I also find that it's easy to sit down one time a day and track all of your food. Not only does it save you on time throughout the day, but your food's tracked and it's done and you don't have to think about it again during the day. We get busy, things come up, and that's when we fail to actually track our food is when we just get too busy to sit down and enter it all into the app. So by pre-planning, pre-tracking your food, that can save you a lot of time during the day and make your weight loss journey a lot more successful because everything is planned and tracked in the app. Tip number 
never for eat breakfast. A lot of people aren't hungry first thing in the morning. And when I say eat breakfast, I don't mean that you have to eat the minute you roll out of bed, but make sure you're starting your day off in a healthy way. My goal for breakfast is no less than 20 grams of protein. And I want my breakfast to be well-rounded. I want to pair macronutrients together. I may have a carb and a protein or maybe a protein and a healthy fat, but I want to make sure that I'm starting my day off right. Breakfast stands for break your fast. You've been sleeping for several hours. Now it's time to refuel your body to re-energize it for the day. So whether big or small, make sure that you're eating a healthy breakfast every single day. Tip number five is a super, super important tip. And this is to find WW friendly or healthy alternatives to your favorite foods. This means having point friendly snacks, even sweet treats and meal components on hand. I have done a ton of videos here on my channel with my favorite WW snacks. I'll make sure I link that down below for you. I also have a recipe website where I have hundreds and hundreds of WW friendly recipes. I'll go ahead and put that here on the screen and that will also be linked down in the description box. Make sure you're stocking your fridge freezer and pantry with healthy snacks and healthy sweet treats. That way, again, you're not reaching for the less healthier option. Maybe you have ice cream in there for your husband and ice cream in there for yourself. If you didn't have ice cream in there for yourself, chances are you're reaching for the one for your husband. So make sure you set yourself up for success and have those healthy snacks, sweet treats, and components for your meals on hand. Tip number six is plan ahead. If you know that you're going to have a really high point dinner, make sure that you're planning for lower point options for the rest of your day. Kind of like we talked about with the pre tracking. Again, if you're going to have a point heavy dinner, maybe lean on those zero point foods during the day to make sure that you're getting some nutrients in. you're feeling full and satisfied because if you don't eat all day because you're saving up for a high point dinner, chances are you're going to go into that high point dinner super hungry and very likely to overeat. So just because you have a really high point dinner, maybe it's taking most of your points for the day, that's when you should be leaning on those zero point foods to help fill the gaps, help you reach your calorie goal, and make it so you're not ravenous going into that dinner. Tip number seven is find alternatives to some of your favorite recipes. We all have that favorite comfort food recipe. Maybe it's one from our grandma or our mom or one that we made all the time before we really got into a weight loss journey. You can still have those recipes, just make them a little bit lighter. For myself and my husband, we love tater tot casserole. That's actually one of our favorite things to have. So what I've done is I have taken a not WW friendly, high point, high calorie tater tot casserole, and I've lightened it up. I've made it a lighter version so that we can enjoy it whenever we want to have it. I know a lot of people struggle to come up with what substitutions to make in these recipes to make them lighter. That can really be the challenging part when you're lightening up some of your favorite foods. I do offer a monthly meal plan. It is actually part of my Facebook group. So if you're not in my Facebook group, head on over and join us. That way you can take part in the meal plan. But what I do is I put together for you all of your meals for the entire month dinners, breakfast, lunches, and snacks. And I do all of the work to lighten up those recipes so it fits into your daily points budget. So I basically have done all the work for you. I include points for all three plans as well as calories. So take advantage of something like my meal plan or a way to really lighten up your favorite foods. That way you never feel deprived. You never feel like you can't eat your favorite foods because what happens when we deprive ourselves or eliminate foods, we're far more likely to binge on those foods and we are are far more likely not to stick with WW or any weight loss plan if we feel that we can't have the things that we love. Number eight is join a community. This is so incredibly, incredibly important. As you know, the WW app has Connect, which is basically like Facebook for WW. There are a ton of Weight Watchers Facebook groups, including mine, that you can join for community and support. You can take advantage of people like myself, a weight loss nutrition coach, dietitian or nutritionist to use for support, to ask your questions and to even be your accountability. You can also have a buddy or a friend. This may be your spouse. It may be a close friend, a coworker, someone who's on a weight loss journey as well to be your support, to be your community. Just make sure you have someone in your corner, someone who's supporting you, someone who you can maybe ask your questions to or bounce ideas off of. It's just really important to have a community when you're trying to lose weight. We're all more successful on a weight loss journey when we have somebody to do it right alongside with us. Tip number nine is the most important tip I would say, or one of the most important tips that I'm going to share with you in today's video. And that is to use your weeklies, eat your weeklies, all of your weeklies, 
every single week. What I've found following the WW program myself and coaching people on the WW program is that if you only eat your daily points every day, you are going to be severely under eating. You are going to be in too extreme of a calorie deficit. Now, if you are someone who eats a lot of zero point foods, and I mean a lot of zero point foods, hardly eat anything processed or packaged, and you really focus on whole foods, you may be the exception. You may actually hit your calories every day and stay within your smart points. But 99% of people following WW don't eat that way. We're all about convenience. We're all about making our lives a little bit easier. And that includes some convenient and prepackaged and processed foods. There's nothing wrong with that. No food is better good. But if you're someone that doesn't pretty much entirely eat zero point foods or whole foods, you're probably under eating by just staying within your daily smart points. WW wouldn't give us weeklies if they didn't want us to eat them. And they certainly wouldn't give us weekly points if it was going to cause us to gain weight. They're a business and they wouldn't want us to quit because we weren't successful on their program. The reason they give us weekly points is so that at the end of the week, we are in a calorie deficit, but a reasonable calorie deficit. You do not not want to under eat for a long period of time. It damages your metabolism. Your metabolism goes into metabolic adaptation, which basically means that it will only burn as many calories as you're feeding it, which also means that you'll likely hit a weight loss plateau rather quickly. It'll be really hard for you to break that plateau. And when you get to maintenance, chances are it's going to be extremely hard for you to maintain your weight and not gain weight back when you're upping your calories or your Weight Watchers points. So use your weeklies, whether that be in one single day or dividing them up over the week, make sure that there isn't a week that goes by that you haven't eaten all of your weeklies. This is how you're going to lose weight in a healthy way. You're going to be able to sustain that weight and you're going to be in a healthy calorie deficit, not a severe calorie deficit that's going to cause damage to your metabolism. And tip number 10 is think of WW or any weight loss journey that you're on as a lifestyle, not a diet. It's not something you're going to do to lose weight and then as soon as you lose the weight, you stop doing it. That's when you're going to gain the weight back. Take it from me, I'm a prime example of that. I did WW about 15 years ago, lost 125 pounds when I got to my goal weight, stopped doing WW, and over the course of the last 15 years have gained a large amount of that back. So whatever you're doing to lose weight, you need to do to maintain your weight. Whatever you're eating to lose weight, you need to eat to maintain your weight. That's why it's important not to put yourself in such a severe calorie deficit. Eat as many calories as you can every day and still lose weight. That's where weekly points come in. Just remember, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. It's something you have to do essentially for the rest of your life or use the tools that you've learned on WW for the rest of your life. Maybe you don't wanna track your food forever. You don't necessarily have to, but what you've learned when it comes to choosing healthier options, portion control from WW, that'll help carry you through your maintenance journey and make this into a permanent lifestyle where you're not like me and you have to start over and lose that weight for a second, third, or fourth time. So those are my top 10 tips to lose weight and keep weight off with the WW program. Down in the comments, let me know what some of your tips are that have helped you be successful. As a community, we could use as many tips as we can, so make sure you're leaving those down in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell next to it so you don't miss a single video. I hope this helped you. I know that these are tips that I've thought about, research that I've done as a weight loss and nutrition coach and implemented into my WW program to make me more successful, to lose weight a little bit slower, but to be able to keep it off and keep my metabolism working at its peak performance. If you have any questions, of course, I'm here to help. Make sure you're checking out that description box for nutrition coaching, macros and calories, highly, highly recommend. Again, you need to make sure you're eating enough on your weight loss journey. Also one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you need a little bit more community, let me be your community. I'd love to help you. Links, discounts to my favorite things. And of course, my Facebook group, definitely come over and join that community as well. It's a very loving and supportive and positive, and we'd love to have you. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.